This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. War Eagle Auburn fans, and welcome to Tiger Tracks, your source for Auburn cross country and track and field news and discussion. I'm your host, Jessica Loomis, and I'm here with my wonderful husband, Kyle, to discuss the Texas Relays, which took place March 29th through April 1st in Austin, Texas. We're in Texas where everything's bigger, except the amount of athletes that we brought, or at least had compete in the Texas Relays. There you go. The amount of athletes that we brought. Yes, I'm sure this was a big event as in everything being bigger in Texas. But yeah. I'm surprised at the amount of um, athletes that we have to talk about from Auburn. It's yeah, so they only took 29 athletes, mm-hmm. um, which is a little bit smaller than we're used to seeing, but that doesn't mean that we had smaller results. Right, and obviously we're not privy to the reasons for all of these things, but in my mind what that tells me is last week at the Florida State Relays, they, it felt like we talked a lot about a lot more. Yes. Maybe people needed a little bit of extra rest and things like that. It could yeah. be. One could of those be, things. or it could just be they are going to a lot of meets this year. Yes, which I don't remember them happen like doing last year. So I maybe we're just doing a more select group at which meets because we don't even have a week off. They're going again next week. I was thinking about this the other day when I was like, when is the break time though? I feel like we always yeah, we have a week it. off. It's not happening anymore. There, there is no break time anymore. Yeah. It just is one of those things, I guess, that you get used to. And when it changes, you're like, this isn't right. Yeah. So lots of good things to talk about at this meet. Um, This was the 95th annual Clyde Littlefield Texas Relays meet. Why do I feel like I should know that name? Well, we go every single year to Texas Relays. I know. Did you ever just like see a name? I remember reading this when you sent me the notes. And I was like, I feel like I should know that name. And you didn't think between then and now to actually like look him up? That shows you probably how much I care, I guess. Yeah, so Kyle's real invested. I, well, it just it's just maybe someone out there, if you're listening, obviously respond to us on social media and you can uh, tell Are us. In, I, I'll look it up by that time. Right. Why are you quoting that? <laughs> so, in other words, also, since this is the 95th, I feel like in five years, the 100th oh, anniversary, wow. that's going to be sick. I can't wait. I would just imagine, Actually, too. I can't wait, but. I would hope you can wait because you have to wait five years. I wonder then for that special event, what they're going to do, who all is going to want to be at that. It's gonna, I mean, we only sent a smaller amount here to this one. I mean, obviously nothing will ever be the pin relays, but oh my I could imagine that the 100th anniversary of the Texas relays would come kind of close. Texas Perfect. relays is a big event. But probably not. Not everybody's got a dish with naked men on it to me. That is <laughs> true. More on that coming later, folks. I know that's that's real odd to talk about here, but we've, we've talked about it before. Yeah. So, Kyle, why don't you start us off with some highlights? We got some highlights to talk about here. And just because it's a smaller amount of athletes to talk about doesn't mean there's not plenty of highlights. Maddie Malone starting us off winning, winning the women's hammer throw again. How many times has she done this this season? A lot. I mean, obviously indoor as well we've had to talk about, but I feel like it's just been, if not all, most of them she's won thus far this season. <laughs> Uh, Abbasiano Akpan won the 400 um, meter hurdles and got a PR all at the same time, 58.85 second run there. So knocking off both things for us, a go- a medal and a PR. So we need to talk about Ryan Kinane also, mm-hmm. who hit a significant PR in the men's 5,000. He ran it in a time of 14 minutes, 5.99 seconds, which is a PR by almost seven seconds. And so in your, just for, again, layman terms, people who don't understand this world as much, seven second differential is, is a, a lot, is a big deal in that type of race. In any type of race, well, in to any be type fair. Of race, but. but yeah, seven seconds is a lot. And Ryan Kinane's done a lot of good things for us, whether it be on cross country. He, you know, made some waves indoor. So this is not a shock. This isn't like somebody coming out of the woodwork and just like all of a sudden doing something great. But we expect this of him. He's been around for a while. Correct. Now, our last person to talk about. I'm going to actually let Kyle talk about this one because this is a huge win for Auburn. This is actually a new athlete to us. And you just want me to do it, first of all, because she knows how much I like throwing things. You do. And this is a throwing event. It is. And it's been a minute since we've been able to... We've had javelin throwers. Right. Obviously, that but we've celebrated. But not like this. Well, we, well, we've celebrated. Let me just remind people, not too long ago, there was Kylie Carter. There was Ashley Carter, who has been behind her, but then last year got to take center stage and did great. Now we're talking about javelin on the men's side in terms of someone just making humongous waves. Keyshawn Strachan won the men's javelin with a PR of 84.27 meters. This is a new Auburn record and also the world and national leading mark by, count them, 
10 meters. By over 10 meters. So let's pause there for a second. So not only does this freshman mm -hmm. come in, get his oh, life. Oh, he's a freshman. He's a freshman. This kid is 19 years old. I saw pictures of him. I was like, I did not think freshman when he I saw him. He is 19. Got a lifetime best throw of 84.27 meters. But not just that. He got the Auburn record. But not just that. He's got the nation's farthest javelin throw. But not just that. At this point in time, he has the farthest javelin throw in the world. Do you understand how big that is in the entire world? That's in that's, that's, the history of throwing things. Or this the, is a the current day of throwing things. You are the top. A 19-year-old man from Auburn University yeah. has the farthest javelin throw at this point in the season in the entire world. It just makes me wish that we could have had Keyshawn here at the same time as Ashley. And, but I don't even care Kylie about that Carter. because I'm just saying, this is a know? man versus the women's javelin. But we could have had both teams dominate. Okay, at the so same time. you always have to rain on my parade. I'm not raining. I'm just saying, what if? So he ranks fourth overall in all of NCAA history in his first meet. Mm -hmm. Think about this. He earned, obviously, SEC Men's Field Athlete of the Week with Duh. that throw. I mean, if you don't earn that, nobody deserves it. You know, whether it doesn't matter what the sport is. There are, like, sometimes performances in a week and whatever event or sport uh, that somebody's competing in that you just look at it and you go, okay, nobody else is going to have a shot at this. This was one of those. That, that is this. <laughs> it, was, it was a great thing for him. It's not the first freshman, the first new face that we've seen just burst onto the scene since yeah. Leroy Burrell has got here as head coach. He obviously, anytime you change coaches in any sport, there's a new way of doing things, a new blood that kind of comes in just trying to refresh things. And so you got some new names here. Now, Keyshawn's one of those here that we're really excited about. And obviously, you know, I guess just coming out on fire in his first big appearance for Auburn. Yeah, killing it. So let's talk about all of the results now. Like we said, there's only 29 athletes, so there's not a lot to talk about, but we will certainly do this justice. So starting with the men's 1500 meter, we only had one athlete, Louis O'Loughlin competing. Now in all of these events, there were quite a few different um, events for the specific race. So for the 1500, there was college and university group A and group B. Right. Then there was high school. Then there was like, sometimes there was an invitational. So you will see that sometimes like in this event, Louis competed with only 10 athletes. But that was his specific group that he was that he was competing in, invited or part of, or placed into, placed into right? Yes. So sometimes with, and I'm not speaking for out of knowledge for this event because I couldn't find this. But sometimes when there's an A and a B, kind of think of it like varsity and JV. Well, sometimes. Yeah, I mean that's so most of our athletes were in the A group. So, Duh. Per Auburn, right? Way to you go. took it right, the words right out of my mouth there. Yeah. It's just, it's like we're married or something. So, okay. So, Louis, he got seventh place out of 10 athletes in his group, and he ran a time of three minutes, 49.7 seconds. So, for the men's 5,000 meter, we've already talked about Ryan with that second place finish out of 19 athletes in their group. So, he ran that time of 14 minutes, 5.99 seconds. Then we had Carson Bedix placing seventh. With his season debut for the 5,000 meter um, for outdoor with a time of 14 minutes, 35.4 seconds. And Joseph Perry placing 19th in 15 minutes, 24.1 seconds. I'm going to steal the relays from you this go around. It kind of hurts my heart, but... You got the relays all last episode. I should get them always. Yes, that's up for debate. The men's 4x400, four your team, Luke Roberts, Matthew Rayner, LeBron Bessick, and John Stevens. They placed 35th out of 44 teams. There were 44 teams that competed in this event. Their time, 3 minutes, 14.9 seconds, which is about 3 seconds slower than their season best, which was back at FSU. But still, a very impressive showing out at a obviously very big field with 44 teams competing. Yeah, obviously very competitive in the relay events at the Texas <laughs> you, Relays. You would hope that the relay events would, you know, kind of be a big deal here. Y you would think. They walk in, I'm just, you know what, I'm just kind of a big deal. Uh, the men's hammer throw, we've got three people to talk about. Eric Ebel finished 11th out of 24. His throw, 67.00 meters, just a little bit short of his best of the season. Kyle Brown got his best of the season, 66.65 meters, which got him 12th out of the 24 competitors. And then Kyle Moisson finished 15th, 65.19 meters was his throw. So for the men's high jump, Dontavious Hill competed with nine other athletes. And this was a really competitive high jump. 
So he placed third with a jump of 2.20 meters. Um, the winner got, what, seven feet, 7.75 inches. So do somebody the do, do, the math, do the math. But... Do the math, do the math, do the math. <laughs> I couldn't do it, so I'm not going to pressure you to do it. Yeah, but I so might also. thanks as you're yelling into the microphone, <laughs> do, do, it, the math. do the math. But I'm just saying, so he, the winner was the only person to even clear that height at yeah. all. Obviously, so it was a really competitive high jump. Yeah, and it's a little bit shorter than his uh, best of the season thus far, which was last meet. So finishing yeah. third is in that type of competition is still really good. Yeah, absolutely. So for men's javelin, we've already talked about Keyshawn Strachan and getting first with his amazing throw. Just a of reminder, eighty-four point two seven meters. Best in the world. Like, I, I, I don't, I cannot even imagine how we're going to do the rest of the season. This is incredible. Yeah, so uh, just a great way to start off uh, with the men. So let's talk about them ladies. Uh, we've got the women's 400-meter hurdles. We've already mentioned her, obviously, on Akpan. First out of 76 people. Yeah, and so... 76 people. Not only did she get first, but Kyle, she blew the competition out of the water. Mm-hmm. 58.85 seconds. Her best of the season, as we've already addressed thus far. And let's just remember... That 58.85 seconds is an incredible 400 time mm -hmm. without hurdles. Yeah. And I threw that in there. <laughs> she's just launching herself over hurdles. So great job to her. The women's 1500, Jean Katsi, eighth out of 10 in her group, four minutes, 28.2 seconds. And Hallie Porterfield, fourth out of her group of 12, four minutes and four seconds flat which is, if our numbers are correct here, 30 seconds faster. Than well, almost. Almost. I'm just rounding up here. This is The math that we have to do here, like on the air in time, like it just needs to be approximate, you know? That's fair. That's fair. You know I'm not good at math anyway. So I finally get to talk about some relays, and I get two. It's fine. So the women's 4x100, obviously this is our first time talking about it this season. Think about, you know, you can't have, remember Kyle, you can't have the 4x1 in indoor. This is only an outdoor sport, so we love that. We love Apparently we one love lap around the track. Four separate athletes running that one lap around the track. We love it, apparently. We do. It is so freaking exciting. So the women's four by one. Shut up. Stop laughing at me. Shante <laughs> Clink. You would think that you would get excited about more than that, but hey, look, to each their own. No, I could watch I could watch YouTube videos of a four by one hundred all day long. So Shante Clink scale, Ashanti Harvey, Janiah Jones throwing herself in there, and Naya Benton Andrews were the relay team members. Second place out of 30 teams with a time of 46.45 seconds. And let's think about this. So this is their debut as a team in this event yeah. this season at this particular competitive Texas Relays event, and they get second. So I always ask these questions. I know we don't know the answers, but it's just me kind of spitballing here. You know, why haven't they run this one yet? You I know? love when you ask questions That's, that we don't know the answers it's to. It's a, you know, rhetorical question, but if you'd like to have an input there, it's open for interpretation. Well, here we are. Just one of those questions that I always it's have in my mind. It's just one of those questions. <laughs> I'll stop derailing you and your relays. Thank you. So for the women's 4x400, the team made it to the finals. So they had kind of a separate, it was, it was a little strange here. I'll be honest in the results. So it's section. probably wrong. So probably from my <laughs> I'm just kidding. There were 38 teams that competed overall. Okay. But our women got sixth place out of those eight that competed in the finals. Right. So in prelims, they placed third. But in finals, they play six, okay? But just remember, there were 38 teams total, not right. just the eight that they competed in the finals with. So the 4x4 four four team was made up of Abisiano Akpan, Ariana Sharp, Amira Sharp, and Ashanti Harvey. So every time that we've run this relay, it's been, different. They, it's been a little bit different, whether right. it's placement of, you know, which leg these athletes are running, there, there's just been, you know, or who the athletes are. But this group of four, these ladies, they had the fastest time of the season with three minutes, 34.3 seconds. Mm, excellent, excellent. Both teams, you know, doing that in the 100 and the 400 now. It's a great overall performance in the specific events that are in the name of this event. Absolutely. Now I'm going to talk about the throwing events for the ladies. We got Mara Hewalt in the women's discus, 11th out of 15th, 54.24 meters was her throw. The women's hammer throw, we've already mentioned Maddie Malone, got the first place gold, 68.48 meters, which is still a little bit shy of her best in last meet. There were a lot of best last meet. Yeah, last meet was really good to these athletes, but so is this meet. Well, yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of wins. It's just so. interesting that there, there's a lot of correlation. It's not the last one we're going to talk about here in a second. Women's high jump, Sanaya Barnes. Um, fourth out of 10, 1.82 meters was her jump. The women's javelin, Sanaya Holly. 
eighth out of 15, 45.19 meters, which last meet was her best one too, so a little bit lower on this one. And then the women's shot put, Mara Hewalt, ninth out of 14th, 16.38 meters, and I'll round us out so you don't have to talk about the triple jump because I know how much that irks you. The triple jump, Amy Warren, fifth out of 21, 12.97 meters was the jump, which is her best of the season by 0.01 meters. Yep. <laughs> hey, best is best. It is. It, it really is. Doesn't matter. As long as you do better than the last time, right? They always talk about finding that 1% extra that you can get better each yep. day, each week, whatever. I sound like I'm philosophical here now, but... You sound like a coach. Well, I'm not, so. Anyway... I think overall, this was a really good meet yeah. for Auburn. I'm, I'm happy that we continue to go out to this meet. Happy that we get to see the athletes compete. And, you know, just really looking forward to continuing on this season. Yeah. So they've got a lot of good things looking forward to. And I think our coach is very... really excited about this new meet that we're going to. So April 7th, Auburn is headed to the Houston alumni meet on the campus of the University of Houston. Where our former or our current Where head coach Coach is. Burrell used to coach. It's, that'll be an interesting reunion for him. I'm sure a lot of his former athletes will be still there and ready of to course. see him. Very emotional for him, but obviously we're happy to have him now. Thrilled. And uh, maybe we'll be doing an Auburn alumni event someday. Maybe. That would be pretty cool. Pretty cool because we only have like two now: the Tiger Track Classic and the War Eagle Invite. That we yeah. do. We usually one or two sometimes, but we'll see. So that is all that we have for this week. A lot of good things to look forward to this season. Like I said, next week, University of Houston, of the Houston alumni meet. So we will talk to you then. War Eagle. War Eagle. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E2C Network. On your way out, I want to remind you to stop by E2Cnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for all our content across our podcast, YouTube channel, and much more. To stay up to date with us, make sure you're following social media accounts such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. While our content here may always be Auburn sports heavy, if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. War Eagle.